What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodyB.com and in this video, I'm going to talk about which is better, Kivi or Kinter. Alright guys, like I said, in this video we're going to talk about which is better, Kivi or Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodyB.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership to all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, like I said, in this video, I'm gonna talk about which is better, Kivi or Kinter, and you might have noticed we're in a slightly different location today. So I'm not gonna be doing any coding in this video, we're just gonna be talking about this stuff. So I thought we'd check out this new set that we have here, and uh, pretty fun. So I get asked this question at least half a dozen times every single day. Which is better, Kivi or Kinter? And it kind of drives me crazy, and here's why. Here are two tools. This is Kivi, and this is Kinter. One's a saw, and one's a screwdriver. Now you tell me which is better. You can't, they're two completely different tools. They're used for two completely different things. They're not related in much any way at all. I mean, you could build things with both of them, but that's about the only way that they're related. So with the screwdriver, you screw things, and with the saw, you saw things. I mean, you could sort of screw things with the saw. Yeah, but that's not its purpose. If you wanna screw something, you wanna use the screwdriver. And you could take a screwdriver and kind of hack around on something and, and saw it up a little bit, but that would be stupid. You wanna use the saw if you need to saw something. And it's absolutely no different when it comes to Kivi or Kinter or PyQt or really any programming language, Ruby, Python, which is better? They're two different tools. Uh, Django, Flask, which is better? They're two different tools. Ruby on Rails, Node, which is better? They're two completely different tools. They don't have anything to do with each other and they have very separate and unique strengths and weaknesses. So whatever your project is, that's gonna determine completely whether you use Kinter or Kivi or PyQt or Swift or React or any of these other things. The project will determine that, not what you like. Which one do you like better? That's wholly and completely irrelevant. It doesn't matter which one you like better. You use the right tool for the job. I absolutely love this saw, but I'm not ever gonna use it to screw something in because it doesn't matter how much I like this. It's not the right tool for the job. And that is the exact point I'm trying to make here. So there really is no better, Kinter or Kivi. Well, Kinter seems a little older. doesn't matter. I can have the oldest screwdriver in the world. It's still a screwdriver. It does screwdrivery things. You can't compare it to a saw. So try and keep that in mind. The next question I always get asked is, which one should I learn first, Kivi or Kinter? It absolutely doesn't matter at all. It depends what kind of apps you want to build, but even then, doesn't really matter. Like, we are coders. We spend our lives learning new things. As soon as Python 2 comes out, Python 3 comes out. And as soon as we learn Python 3, before you know it, Python 4 comes out. There's always something new to learn. There's always a new framework that comes around that you have to learn. So we are always learning. I've been doing this 30 something years. Every single day I learn something still even now. And I find great joy in that. I love learning new things, diving in, seeing, oh, what can we do with this thing, right? Why did they build it like this? Why didn't they do it like this? And digging in there and really seeing how these things work is so much fun for me. And that's why I'm successful because it's fun for me to do that so it doesn't seem like work. If that doesn't seem fun to you, this probably isn't the profession for you because we're always gonna be learning. So when somebody comes to me and says, which should I learn, this or this, I see a huge red flag immediately. Like learn them both, learn them all, learn everything you can. Imagine trying to apply for a job and your resume says, that you know one thing. And they've got a stack of other resumes with people that know 10, 15, 20 things. Which are they gonna hire? They're always gonna hire the person that knows more. So trying to just learn one little thing and do as little as possible, you're not gonna make it. Like you have to keep learning. You have to learn more and more stuff. Plus, you know, it's hard to say which tool is right for the job if you don't know what the tools do. So you have to know three, four, five, six, seven different things before you can say, okay, I think we should use this for this particular project. You need that level of mastery. And the only way to do that is to learn these things. So you learn everything you can about Kinter, for instance, and then you build something with it. Then you build something else. Then you build something else, right? Then you move to the next one. You try Kivi. You learn everything you can about it, and then you build something. You build something else. Go back to your Kinter projects, grab one of them and go, I wonder if I can make this with Kivi, and then try. You'll learn so much about both Kinter and Kivi and anything else by doing that sort of thing, by comparing two frameworks, 
by learning the ins and outs, learning what you can do in one and not in the other, learning to hack around. I can do a lot of things with Kinter that you probably can't do with Kinter because I know all about it. I've been using it for years. You get that level just by using it, just by learning it and playing with it. So I know you mean well, but stop asking which is better. There is no better. They're both equally good. They're both equally bad. Some of them are good for one thing and bad at another thing and vice versa. You know, if you wanted to do a mobile Android app, you wouldn't use Kinter. It wouldn't work at all. So like, it just depends on what you're trying to build always and forever. And that's not just with graphical user interfaces. That's for everything. Web development, websites, apps, everything. It just depends on what the project is. Also, is it you? Are you working with a team? Are you working with a company of, with 10 or 15 or 20 people on the team? Does the company have $40 million to dump into this project? That will make a determination on which tools you use. So it really just depends on each specific project, on each specific group of people that are working on it, on your skill level, on your team's skill level, on what you're trying to do, what the outcome you want, the time frame. Some tools take longer to use. I can crank out something in Kinter in like 20 minutes. It might take me an hour and a half to do it with Kibi, right? Time is a part of this. Which one do you need to do quicker? So all of these things go into the fact that there is no right or wrong here. Use the tool that is best for the situation. Use the tool that you're most comfortable with. Sometimes even if a tool isn't well suited for something, if you're really good at it, you can overcome those limitations just by the fact that you're really good at using that tool. You can use workarounds and you know little hacks and all these different things that, you know, sort of level the playing field. So it really just depends. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, so you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.